Hello everyone, the topic that I would like to discuss with you today is about the Pope's challenging college experience. So as an introduction, after graduating from secondary school as valedictorian and after fulfilling his father's obligation doing military service in road construction, the father and son moved from their hometown in Vadovice to Krakow. So, Krakow is the ancient royal capital of Poland and the country's intellectual center. It is also here where the Babel Cathedral was located. And they live in his uncle's house in a small dark basement which they rented with a very low rate. So, this is where the school uh, the name is Hagulinian or L is the, uh, pronounced as W so we can pronounce it as Hagiwunian University in Poland. So after completing his studies at the Marcin Vadovita High School in Vadovice in the summer of 1938, Karol Wojtyła enrolled at Hagiwunian University in the autumn of the semester. So in his freshman fresh uh, freshman year uh, he studied philosophy Polish language and literature introductory Russian and old church uh, Slavonic the said university was founded in 1364 by Casimir the third the great and it is the oldest university in Poland and the second oldest university in Central Europe Europe and one of the oldest surviving university in the world and notable graduate of this university is no other than the astronomer Nicolaus Copernicus next is that uh, Carol as a university student so while studying such topic as philology and various languages he worked as a volunteer libra librarian and was required to participate in compulsory military training in the academic legion but he refused to fire a weapon one should not be surprised that he committed in himself attending 36 hours of classes a week though according to the university regulations he needed to register for 10 in spite of his hectic schedule he still had time for many other activities outside the university like for example he still served in the Babel Cathedral to have acquaintances uh, renewed acquaintances with Father Figlewicz which is his first catechist in Badovice he also engaged in theater and he also enrolled himself study in in other sc uh, in schools uh, for drama and also he also learned other many languages so here in the university he learned a lot of language now World War II happened in September 1931 when Germany invaded Poland so it started to the World War started when Germans the Germans invaded Poland and the allies of Poland Great Britain and France responded by declaring war on Germany on September 3 the war between the USSR or the Union Soviet of Russia and Germany began on June 22 19 41 with uh, the German invasion of the Soviet Union so what happened to Poland the occupation of Poland so on September 1 1939 the Germans and the Russians invaded Poland and divided Poland into East and West with a center zone called general government situated in Krakow as so as Badovice was situated in the west, it became part of Germany as with a nearby Polish town called Oswicim or in German Os Oswitz. The Germans does not only e wanted to exploit the country but they meant to destroy the Polish culture and identity. So the Jews received the, the extreme persecutions but also the, the Germans also were subject to also persecutions 
so to do this they have to close all the schools and they have to arrest all the intellectuals the priests who can influence the minds of the Polish people for for according to Hitler the Polish people are born for law labor so as a result of these invasions the Polish people experience the so-called forced labor and one of them is Carol so from 1940 to 1944 Carol Boitewa variously worked in the following in order to avoid deportation to Germany so as you can see in the screen on your picture we have these women working and in the concentration camp and below the picture is a quarry this quarry is where St. John Paul II uh, worked as a manual laborer in a limestone quarry so from here he was able to was transferred to as a salesman in Solvay chemical factory so these are the works that Carol experienced in order not to be deported to forced labor camp or to be deported in Germany so these are the work approved by the Germans in order, in order for them to be secured with the Osby's identity card so if you don't have that card it's either you will be shipped to forced labor camp in Germany or being shot dead so that's how difficult their life despite the difficult situation they continue Carol continued to be uh, his studies but this time it is underground no? so he joined the Rhapsodic Theater an underground resistance group that aimed to sustain Polish culture and boast Polish morale through covert readings of poetry and drama so they perform and they invite so it's quite quite uh, dangerous because may might die because of what they do because the Germans do not allow them to perform all of this and in 1942 the Hagunian University started to operate secretly so this was a defiant act in order for self-preservation despite of the risk they are facing they were operating clandestinely with five faculties at the start after three years of operation 136 professors risked their lives by teaching 800 students including Carol so they had their classes at night in private homes and there were instances that they were almost caught by the Nazis so here I want also to share Carol's near-death experience so this is the time that I want to share with you that God must have spared him from death because he has a plan for him no so when he was a kid he was already had this near-death experience when he was at a restaurant a sort of a bar and coffee shop John, uh, just downstairs from his apartment at 7th Church Street a pistol was left at the counter and probably by a policeman and one of the banners children picked it up and fired a gun and it went off missing Carol by by mere inches he was nine years old then no? So another occasion occurred when he was working in the chemical plant. He was working a double shift and was working, walking five miles, going home late in the evening. A German army truck bumped him and his body flew in the ditch. So that's quite painful, painful, but he was able to survive by that time. And another instance of his near death is when he was he became Pope. So I will talk about that later on when we reach uh, the the topic when we he became Pope. Next is that the death of his father. It was on February 18, 1941. He was about 21. Uh, 20 to 21 years old upon returning home bringing with him some medicines he found his father collapsed over his bed so his father died of a heart attack leaving Carol the immediate family's only surviving members so he said I was not I was not at my mother's death I was not at my brother's death I was not at my father's death and reflecting on these times of his life nearly 40 years later 
at 20 I had already lost all the people I loved so he expressing his his uh, sorrow and but then God has a plan for his life so for my short reflection about this life we can really say that we have to learn to trust God even in the most seemingly desperate situation God does not throw a dice no? everything has a purpose so that's all for my discussion about this topic if you have questions or clarifications feel free to message me thank you for listening